this is part two of my review of the Nikon Z9. There's a link to part one here, and in the description if you're looking for detail about exposure settings, color management, and focus. And the table of contents for this video, which includes the continuous shooting features and video. I recorded my on-camera segments in part one using H.265 8K with standard dynamic range. On-camera in this part is recorded in 4K with N-Log. <laughs> More details about those settings in a minute. Now, in Nikon Z9 ads, the keyword is unstoppable. And I've whined in the past about Nikon's limitations on burst—100, sometimes only 200 frames. So it's going to be unstoppable, it better not have a burst limit. And praise to the engineers, it does not. Custom setting D2, max shots per burst, can be set to infinite or 1 to 200. My prayers are answered. Hold the release button, and from the left side caller, select continuous mode, low or high. Awkward. Then press the burst key settings 10 to 20 frames. Low offers 1 to 10 frames per second. Now, if you think these two should be combined, turn the dial past timer to quick release mode. You can select all of those as well as 30 and 120 frame per second burst. That's better. I'm leaving the caller right there. To, so to measure burst, I set lossless compression raw with JPEG Fine Star, all manual settings to a freshly formatted 128 gig CF Express B card. The number of available images is 968. When the shutter is pressed, the remaining buffer status is 21, reaching zero in less than two seconds as it starts to stutter. And in the first second, 20 frames, in the second, 16, then about six per second. Cycling down to 10 with the same settings, the buffer holds for over six seconds, saving 10 images for seven seconds, then continuing at six per second. Now, without RAW, even 20 seems to be effortless. The buffer never drops below 18, and it kept running for over a minute, capturing exactly 1,200 frames in 60 seconds. That clearly qualifies as unstoppable. That's the longest and fastest I've seen, even more impressive, because these are 44 megapixel photos. There are some limitations to the 30 and 120 frame bursts. Only normal JPEG quality is available, and while 30 saves large size images, 120 saves only small 11 megapixel images. Still, <laughs> and they're limited to four seconds per burst. Now, there are a couple things. If you have picture review on, you'll see each image from the burst. That can take a long time. Pressing the shutter returns you to live view. Uh, with this fast card, absolutely no buffer writing delays. And there's the D12 view all in continuous mode. Uh, when it's off, the viewfinder and the screen are black during burst shooting. If you have a use case for this setting, please let me know. Also, I've been recording this with the artificial shutter sound on. Silent is a setup option for the shutter camera sounds shutter off, or turn off all sounds with silent mode. Now, there are more drive modes, interval timer, time-lapse video, a stills option, and focus shift. They're well implemented. Setup is relatively easy. Results are as expected. And the stills and video menu tabs both have shooting menu bank options. Unfortunately, changing the video setting also changes the stills. They are not independent. So, with my video settings in B, I need both the video still switch and the bank shortcut, by default the fun one key in front, to change modes. With extended on, that changes everything, including exposure mode and aperture shutter settings. Even with the few video exclusions mentioned in part one, you can tell Nikon is very serious about video on the Z9. And that starts with the very high speeds available by using CF Express Type B, enabling recording speeds and settings usually only available with external recorders. A full sized HDMI port with cable clamps, mic in, headphone out, three codecs, Apple's ProRes at 10 bit, the new high efficiency H.265 at 8 or 10 bit and the older H.264 at 8. 
Resolution's up to 8K, 7,680 by 4,320 pixels. That's 33 megapixels, the equivalent of four 4K images. Frame rates up to 120. And now, but there are some limitations and exclusions, so let me break that down for you. ProRes HQ, available in standard dynamic range or N-Log, selected here, both up to 4K 60. This is an all intra codec. And with that setting, a 128 gig CF Express B card holds eight minutes. The data rate is 1.8 gigabits per second. Uh, now, I'm sorry, I, I, I said that wrong. It's an astounding, card devouring 1.8 gigabits per second. That's 13 gigabytes per minute. Or try H.265 10 bit. This and the remainder are long GOP codecs. 8K is 420 subsampling, the rest 422. Now, SDR, hybrid log gamma, and N log gammas are available. 4K goes up to 120 frames, 8K up to 30, now 35 minutes, or about 400 megabits per second. <laughs> and that's the setting I'm using for this video H.265, 4K, N log at 30. Custom white balance, and I've used Final Cut's N log LUT but also color graded to my preferences. My studio lighting configuration requires ISO 800, but that is the minimum ISO when using either HLG or N-Log. Stock up on the required ND filters for your exterior shoots. And while we're looking at this screen, note that I'm using full-time autofocus with Auto Object Detect, which is doing a nice job keeping a steady focus on me, even if it is flipping between face, eye, and subject detection very happy with that. Not often that a camera's autofocus is reliable enough for me to use. Uh, now, interestingly, there are a bunch of HLG configuration options. That's new. H.265 8-bit does not have gamma options, but also goes to 4K 120 and 8K 30. 38 minutes, about 360 megabits per second. H.264 8-bit, also no gamma options, maxes to HD 60, about 50 megabits. So I'm not sure you'd buy this camera only for ENG news footage, but you'd probably use this setting if you did. While the other codecs use the .mov extension, this is .mp4, a nod to its use of AAC audio encoding. And I assume you noticed that there were no crops as we went through, and that 24 and 30 frame options are available in all settings. But let's see 4K ProRes and 8K H.265, both recorded with standard dynamic range and the neutral color profile side by side. Now, at the end of a YouTube processing chain, even if you're watching at 4K, I doubt you'll be able to tell the difference. In the end, of course, ProRes saves much more data and is easier on your processor while editing. Incidentally, Although there is a dedicated video record button, I really prefer to use the shutter to start recording. In G2, video custom controls, that can be set. Uh, this also enables remotes to start recording video. Uh, while recording both a countdown and count up, the manual says the recording limit for a single clip is over two hours. I tested video battery life, clip duration, and overheated by recording this scene in a 21 Celsius studio. Estimate at the start of recording is used to determine the maximum length. In my experience, there is usually lots of card space remaining. The remaining time promises 74 minutes on a 120 gigabyte card. But after recording 74 minutes, there was still another 64 minutes left on the card. <laughs> I reformatted anyway and continued. The battery went red after 135 minutes, so I plugged in the USB-C cable for power. The manual does say that continuous video recording may overheat the card, and warns me not to remove the card while the warning icon is on screen. At two weeks of shooting, I did not see the warning appear. You'll find most video settings on the Video tab, a few more in Custom Section G, and the HDMI controls in Setup. It's not ideal, but even if I'd arrange that differently, I can remember what's where. <laughs> now, by default, full-time autofocus used with wide area starts identifying and tracking objects. 
Switch to tracking, position the spot, and press OK to start. And the results are, well, less than optimal is the best way to describe it. What's nice? Touch works when an external monitor is connected. That's very useful for rack focus in video. Using single, wide area, small, tapping the screen will focus the subject. Uh, however, depending on the focus distance change, it's not reliable enough to use while recording. I'm happy with the results of the handheld shooting that I did using the Z9 stabilization. The vibration reduction setting can be independent for video or same as photo. Using sport allows smooth pans and provided the results that I wanted. The enhanced electronic VR setting is only available for video and not available when shooting 8K or with the 100 and 120 frame rates. A fairly basic audio control displayed in decibels set in arbitrary units 1 to 20. The attenuator can be disabled and the mic jack has plug-in power available. Uh, but for this video, I've used the Sennheiser MKE 600 on an external recorder. Now, by the light of a single candle, the results at ISO 25600 are good at f2.8, so no need to access the extended settings. However, face eye detect does not work at these low levels. The low light AF is a stills only feature, so I've switched to manual focus. And this scene, with its very limited dynamic range, is recorded using SDR and the neutral color profile with a few color grading tweaks. I am using a custom white balance, which captures the mood and the color nicely. Rolling shutter should be minimal with the fast readout of this sensor. Mm, yes, minimal, but with a fast pan, it's not completely eliminated. Lots to like about the HDMI output capability, one of the setup options. I like that it will output the menu and overlay in all resolutions. When mirror is off, the LCD doesn't display when HDMI is connected. I appreciate that clean output resolutions up to 8K are available selected on this screen. Now, to find an affordable 8K recorder. The playback or review menu is full featured. To see images as you take them, turn on picture review here. More details are available, but only if you enable them. Uh, use the playback display options menu. There's an extensive set of in-camera raw processing options, and the free NX Studio desktop app can also apply all of the Nikon picture control settings using your computer. The Z9 has built-in GPS. It's not dependent on your phone, recording location logs and setting time. The on-screen icon shows it's active and log is currently recording. Now, I'm not sure what kind of Hocus Pocus Nikon's using, but on my iMac, when I plug the camera in, the OS doesn't seem to see it. Nikon's Transfer 2 app, part of the free NX Studio download, does. And Final Cut also sees the files, but often fails to import them. Very strange. You'll probably want to get a CF Express B reader with a Thunderbolt connector. Nikon's SnapBridge, which I've covered in another video, offers a great deal of useful functionality, including remote shooting. And the app is now updated to version 2.8.2, and a new feature alerts you to the existence of new firmware and installs the update without needing to access a computer. Incidentally, the 1.11 release includes an autofocus update for video in DX mode. As I said at the beginning, I lack the expertise to cover a bunch of this camera's capabilities. That means I've not covered three ports, Flash Sync, the Remote Connection Terminal, and Ethernet. The Flash section of the manual references many Pro Studio lighting configurations on and off camera with multiple strobes. And the long list of connection capabilities, both wired and wireless for image transfer and tethered shooting, are more than enough for an entire video. I'll ask for a return visit to see if I can understand and demonstrate those. A downloadable reference manual runs over 900 pages. It does provide good background on many settings, but it's also an excellent sleep assist. Uh, now, for those who care, the review unit says Made in Thailand. 
Now, the serious competition for the Z9 is Sony's A1, which I haven't reviewed, but it has some advantages like better viewfinder resolution and higher ISOs. I, I do have a few firmware update requests, like focus improvements. The Z7 had extensive focus upgrades in firmware after its initial release. Let's hope for the same here. I'd like to have the AF on key enabled in manual focus mode, as well as full video stills independence, so the shooting bank and exposure mode switch when changing. Real time remaining time display during video recording would be nice. And Zebra in IRE or RGB units. I know, nitpicking. All that to say, the Z9, while close, isn't perfect. But if you're a Nikon fan, you will absolutely adore this camera, even if you're not. There's a lot here that demands your attention and consideration. You will not be disappointed, but commit to reading the manual. And to upgrading the rest of your photo workflow to the Z9's level of performance. Large CF Express Type B cards, 8 terabyte or more external drives, and likely a fast new processor with a larger, higher quality display. As my hashtag says, I'm not sponsored. The Z9 now goes back to Nikon Canada. They don't review my videos before posting, and thanks to my members, there are no interruptions while you're watching my videos. So if membership is for you, please use the join button below. Subscribing remains free, and I do read and reply to all civil comments and relevant questions. Thank you for watching. Stay safe.